What do you wear and how do you layer clothing for cold weather winter riding, especially for fat biking on snow? This is a question I get asked consistently around this time of year. Right as the temps start dipping and we're transitioning from cooler fall weather to downright freezing cold winter riding. And I'll be honest, it's right around now when my personal motivation to continue riding outdoors starts to dwindle. So I need all the help I can get. In today's video, I'll go through the versatile, foolproof, and quite simple layering system that keeps me cozy in temps ranging from around 30 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to zero during normal one to two hour winter fat bike rides. Spoiler alert, it takes much less clothing than you might think to stay comfy in snowy riding conditions. And most of us actually have a tendency to overdress because we're scared to death of feeling cold. You know I'm right. Anyway, when your layering is dialed, the weather becomes less daunting and it's much less of a struggle to nudge yourself out the door. Your rides are more enjoyable and you can focus on the nature and beauty of your surroundings instead of being consumed by shivering misery. With that said, I've already made numerous specific and highly detailed videos about how to keep your core warm and your extremities warm for deep winter fat biking on expeditions like the Iditarod as well as tips and hacks for keeping your fingers and toes from going numb and all that. I'll link to that playlist below if you want to take a deeper dive with me. For now, I'll keep it super simple and begin with the backbone of a successful clothing system. This should come as no surprise, always start with a high quality base layer that wicks sweat away from the body. For the top, I begin with a comfy t-shirt. For me, this is usually long sleeve and I tend to stick with a light to midweight merino wool for next to skin garments. An example of this is a Smart Wool 150 long sleeve tee. It keeps you warm even if it gets damp from sweat and it doesn't get as stinky as synthetic materials. But PolyPro and similar materials work just fine too, especially if you're gonna throw it in the laundry bin after your ride and you're not out for a multi-day trip. Otherwise, they can get pretty smelly. For the bottom, I start with plain old mountain biking chamois liner shorts, the same as I'd wear in summer. Then I throw on some knicker length long johns. Just like up top, a mid-weight merino wool is preferred. But realistically, I pillage through my ski and snowboarding stash and use whatever I happen to have in the bin. You can buy specific three-quarter length bottoms, but I usually just trim down full length pants. This way they fit over my calves and they don't interfere with my long socks or my boots. FYI, I also use these for summer bike packing instead of leg warmers. They're easy to slide on and take off over your shoes and you don't have to deal with them slipping down your legs and having to adjust them back up. But best of all, they keep your hips and butt warm too, not just your legs. On top of the long johns go the main riding pants. You're looking for something roomy enough for your base layer, but you don't want too much extra slop and flop that can get caught in your chain or rub your frame. They should also have a stretchy, breathable fabric that can shed wet snow, and ideally they're windproof, at least in the front. I know it sounds like a unicorn, but before you go out and buy specific fat biking pants, dig through your closet. Many hiking pants or Nordic ski pants will work just fine. Ski touring and mountaineering pants are also fantastic options. Many have full-length zippers to help with moisture management, and they're designed with a slim fit that widen out enough at the shins to fit over ski boots. Some will also have reinforced inner ankle areas, which is nice too. I have multiple friends that swear by DinaFit pants, but they are a lofty investment. For everyday use, I'm not super picky. I have some Outdoor Research Ferrosi hiking pants that I'll grab, and I've been super happy with these Pinedale pants from Steel. I've also used plenty of cross-country ski pants, and at least around here, you can usually find some pretty cheap at the local thrift shops, especially if you keep your eyes peeled during the summer months. Since you'll probably ask anyway, my personal favorites are the Old Man Winter Pants from Bontrager. They're designed specifically for fat biking, they check the boxes pretty well, and even come with removable gaiters. I've had the same pair for years, and they've held up great through the Iditarod and many, many long days in the saddle. Over the summer, I scored a second pair on clearance, but I just checked again, and unfortunately, it appears Trek discontinued them. Super bummer. 45 North Notvin pants are pretty similar, so you could check those out. Anyway, if you have a pair of pants that you love for fat biking, please share them in the comments. Back up top, we'll go over what I call the main riding jersey or jacket. 
Depending on the ride, I'll often be wearing a hydration pack. If so, that'll get sandwiched between the base layer and the main layer. So I make sure that this piece is sized up accordingly, or is at least stretchy enough to accommodate the pack without everything feeling too constricted. As for the garment itself, a normal long sleeve cycling jersey works just fine. Again, merino wool is a great call because it's so nice for wicking moisture while keeping you warm. Another nice feature to look for is a full zip that can also unzip from the bottom. With fat biking, it's nice to be able to dump heat down near your belly and stay zipped up high to keep wind off your chest and your hydration hose from freezing. With that said, I tend to go straight to a hooded midweight jacket instead of a jersey simply because it's more versatile. This is called the Trail Action Hooded Jacket from Mont Bell, and Jay Peterberry turned me onto it a few years ago. When I bought it, it was like 80 or 90 bucks. I think it's now up to around 110, but it's been a solid investment. Unfortunately, it does not have a bottom up zipper, but it excels everywhere else. It's very warm, but it also breathes exceptionally well. It's nice and stretchy, and it fits great over a hydration pack. When zipped all the way up with a hood on, it's also a partial balaclava with great cheek coverage and protection from the wind. Believe it or not, this jacket can keep me toasty from 30 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to low single digits, depending on how I zip it, roll up my sleeves, and utilize the hood. I've thought about having a seamstress put pit zips in it, but I've gotten by just fine without. However, Mont Bell, if you're listening, pit zips and a second zipper from the bottom up would make this jacket potentially perfect for fat biking, just saying. Another piece of the puzzle that I'll shove in a pocket or my frame bag is this ultralight windbreaker. If the wind kicks up or the temp dips suddenly, I'll throw it on and it always surprises me how effective it actually is. It's worth an easy 10 degrees Fahrenheit and it's a lifesaver that goes with me everywhere. Around my neck, I'll wear a buff this keeps drafts from creeping in beyond my jacket. I can also pull this up over my ears, my face, and my chin in different ways to keep me warm as conditions change. I also wear a second buff that I've cut down to about a third of the size. I can quickly pull this up over my nose and cheeks if it gets extremely cold or windy. Then it's just a thermal cycling cap with ear covers and my helmet. Or if I'm not wearing a helmet, I'll opt for a fleece baseball cap with ear flaps. And then of course, always some form of glasses or sunglasses to protect the eyes and keep them warm. Since I have a nice pair of Dogwood Designs pogies, my hands don't require any bulky, thick gloves to stay warm. So usually a plain old pair of fleece liners does the trick. These are Mont Bell chemise gloves and they get two thumbs up. As far as my feet go, I'm pretty much always wearing 45 North boots. I usually opt for the wolf hammers unless it's really frigid, in which case I'll reach for the wolf gars. I've discussed sock and vapor barrier systems I use in other videos, but I find those to be overkill for shorter rides of just one to two hours. So most of the time, I just throw on a single pair of over-the-calf merino or alpaca wool socks. So let's do a recap and tie it all together. I put on a chamois, base layers top and bottom, pants, and a hooded jacket. Around my neck, I have a full buff and a trim down buff for my nose, and on my head, either a standalone fleece hat or a thermal cycling hat and a helmet. Wool socks on the tootsies, fleece liners on my hands, some eye protection, and a windbreaker jacket on standby. And that's it. My complete, super simple, and versatile layering setup for a typical everyday fat bike session. Again, this is not an extensive list for epic deep winter rides and multi-day expeditions in sub-zero temps. These will obviously require many more layering options like puffy jackets and ruffs or mushers hats, maybe some arm warmers, gaiters, rain gear, vapor barrier systems, glove systems, and all that, which I have already covered in dedicated videos and they're all linked below. With that said, hopefully this all makes sense to you, and I wanted to show you just how easy it can be to head out for an enjoyable fatty ride in comfort without being deterred by the weather or elements. Info on all the items I chatted about is down in the description, and don't hesitate to ask questions or say hey in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe if you feel compelled to, and until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. 
Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.